Hello. How is everyone? Doing good today. Y'all wave. <laughs> Woo! Hey, Ash. <laughs> How's your week going? Okay, here. I, I need to hear you. Let's see. Let's try it. Let's see if we can unmute each other just to talk. Unmute yourself and let's see if we can do it without some feedback just to say hello. I miss y'all. Hey, guys. Hello. Hi. Happy Tuesday. Happy, Happy Tuesday. Tuesday. Welcome. Oh, Hi. So glad to have y'all with us. Ashley, Pam. Very good. Hey, okay, good to Hi. see you. Shay. I was about Hi. to be mad. Why? Because I was having problems getting in. Like he was asking, he was oh. saying that the host had to let me in and all this stuff. And I'm like, what? Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> no, we can't have no problems with that. No. No, no problems at all. Well, I'm glad you guys are here. Um, you can go ahead and mute yourselves back and we will get started. I have, um, you know, all my screens going as usual. But um, Kim. So who's gonna pray us in first? That's the, that's the question, always. Who's gonna be brave and pray us in? <laughs> Come on, it's like, I, I think I have two, a lipstick and a, and a hot flash fan falling. Oh, okay, this is equivalent to sitting on the front row. Yes, it is, every week, right? So I'm gonna jump on in. Go on in, baby girl. And I'm going to pray. Hey, go on, Peyton. Come on, Peyton. <laughs> and I have to give a quick testimony. Please um, do. Please. Some, something was kind of nudging at me today and, mm -hmm. and at work. And I just had to just start singing. And, and God just took that thing away from me. And I'm so grateful that our warfare is in our worship. Come it on. is powerful. It is powerful. And I'm so grateful that God gives us joy and, and, and just the hope in the words that we sing. I just can't even explain, but I'm so grateful. So Lord, we just thank you. We, we will make a joyful noise unto you today, Lord God. We will exalt you. We will lift your name high. We give thanks to you. We praise you, Father God. Uh, we magnify you for you are greater than any situation or circumstance that challenges us or that we face. And we thank you, Father God, for the strength, the courage, and the confidence, Father God, to face those challenges, Father God, with the wisdom of your word, Lord God, by the blood of your testimony, Father God. We just thank you that we have brothers and sisters that to lift us up, support us, and edify us, Lord God. We thank you for the word that will come forth this evening through the mouths of your broken vessels, um, Minister Kim and Minister Gwen, Lord God. We thank you for the sacrifices and the challenges that they face, Lord God, throughout this week and even through this day to get to this point, to share that thing that you put in them, Father God, that will nurture us, that will encourage us, and that will bring enlightenment. In Jesus' name, we do give thanks to you and praise you. Amen. 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 Well, listen, I want to go ahead. So I'm going to go ahead and um, start my slides and do a little bit of a review. And then um, just I mean, a very, very short review just to, over, to go over, to kind of remind you of where what we've covered over these last few weeks. And then I'm actually gonna let Kim go first today and then I'm gonna close it out. But um, anybody have any questions or anything else they wanna share before we go into everything? Excuse me. Anything else? Let's see. Make sure I got my chat up. Okay. Awesome. Valerie said, do it. <laughs> okay. All right, Ashley. Well, we, we were, so tell you, tell your babies, hello. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, so we've been talking about finish line living. So today we're going to close it out. Um, next week, Kim and I are going to be training. Uh, I'm sorry. We're going to be ministering. Training. Yeah. We're going to be <laughs> sharing. I'm looking at training and all this. It's got too many things going on in my head. But yeah, so next week we're going to be in New Jersey ministering at a women's conference. And so y'all know anybody woo, in the Jersey City area, she's going to be ministering the word. And I am going to be um, sharing poetry. So I'll be, so I'll be Gwendolyn Faye next week. 
<laughs> I put on my, my alter ego. And um, so G keep us lifted up. We'll be leaving on Tuesday. So next Tuesday, we will not have God stalkers, unfortunately, because we will both be either in the air or in the airport <laughs> at seven o'clock. So we figured, you know what? This might be a good opportunity for you all to go back and review some of the old videos. And then when we come back the following week in April, we will go ahead and get started with the next series. And um, we'll send you an email and let you know what that's gonna be. But um, in the meantime, you can go get caught up and go look, go look back over some of the other things that we've talked about. But today we're finishing Finish Line Living. And the subtitle is A Vision for Eternity. And our foundation of scripture is Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 in the New King James Version. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finish, finisher of our faith. And I love that. You know, I love uh, endurance running. And so this race that we're in, that we're running in the in in, in Christ is an endurance race. Hi, Pam. Hi, Sharon. Hi. <laughs> and so the foundation, so basically there's four foundations that we've been covering. Uh, one being the faith life re re requires commitment. And oh, I was so blessed. I don't know which song it was, Kim, that you put in the, um, the, the worship of the week playlist. And it was talking about how God is committed to us. <laughs> Oh, forever, Jason Nelson. Forever. Oh, my God. Y'all need to pull that up. Forever. <laughs> Talk about how God is committed to us. And so our faith life, our, our faith in him requires that we're committed. And then that you need training to run your race. You know, every athlete goes into a very strict um, discipline of training that they inflict on themselves so that they can perform at their optimum, right? That they can perform at their height, that they can receive the medal. And Kim let us know last week, we are all gold medalists in this race. There's nobody, this isn't a competition. You're running your race and God wants you to finish it. And so it's, he wants you to endure. And, um, for, and so in order for us to endure in our own races, we've got to in. In, uh, enter ourselves into a program of training. We know that's the training in the word, training, um, allowing the Holy Spirit to, to, to speak, le listening, learning how to hear his voice, um, disciplining our flesh, disciplining our habits, like di disciplining our prayer lives, take spending time in the, in the secret place. And I love Kim, Kim, Kim brought out that we have to uh, ask the Holy Spirit to help us to endure in the secret place. Sometimes we uh, we in the secret place sleeping, <laughs> <laughs> sleeping and nodding and yawning and getting distracted by our phones. And it's like we got to allow the Holy Spirit to ask Him, count on Him to help us to endure in prayer, um, so that we can speak to God directly. And then the third thing is discipline that really helps you stay on course. And um, it's like, there's so many things that come along as you're running to try to pull you away from the race. And so we have to discipline our, our lives and really getting that vision for eternity in front of us is the thing that's gonna keep us moving in spite of everything that comes our way, really to, to stop us and to keep us from finishing, right? And then the last thing, we wanted to talk about is what we've been talking about is vision is really seeing the end from the beginning. And so I can't wait. <laughs> I peeked at Kim's slide. So, <laughs> yeah, I was like, what? So is this your first one, Kim? Paul? Huh? Is this your, your first one about Paul? No, no, Paul was what we, we, we talked about Paul last week, but last if you want me to hit it, go over okay. it, um, you know, really quick. No, I, I couldn't remember if that was the right one or not, so we, I'm, I'm just going to hurry up and go forward. So you can go ahead and start from there. All righty. Seeing the end from the beginning. Yes. Okay. So seeing the end from the beginning. So part of the objectives that um, Sir Gwen had put up was also saying that vision 
is seeing the end from the beginning. So, so I just thought that was just so awesome. Um, the fact of the matter is that that is what vision is. You know, vision is, it ain't what I see right now, but it's what I'm believing and seeing in the spirit, the, the final product or the finished product, right? You know, like if you're getting a house built, you know, you, you kind of can envision what the house is going to look like. You kind of know what the house is, is, is going to, to look like, right? But it's, 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 it's another thing because it's not physically there, right? But when you pay your money <laughs> to get a new house built, you're believing that those um, builders are going to do just what you say right? Just what they said they were going to do. So it is amazing to me that, you know, vision is seeing the end from the beginning. And it definitely has a lot to do with our faith and our trust in God. And the fact that we believe God who gives the vision, right? God gives us vision, um, that he is committed to us to see this vision through. So what is vision? Vision. Um, Vision is, per the dictionary, right? Vision is, is the act of power of seeing sight. Vision is a thought or a concept or object formed by your imagination. A manifestation to the sense of something immaterial. Um, a thought or concept or object formed by the imagination. A mode of seeing or conceiving. And the last one says unusual discernment, okay? Something seen in a dream or a trance, all right? So now we're talking about vision and, and, and we're talking about God-given vision. So I, I like to say when we're, you know, having class, what particular thing are we talking about? Like last week when I talked about, um, you know, God being a guy who we worship is God. So I, I just like making that clear. So right now we're talking about vision and we're talking about God-given vision, right? So seeing the end from the beginning isn't just about my desire for a good outcome. I want mm. you to get that. Mm. Seeing the end from the beginning isn't just about my desire for a good outcome. It's about putting our faith and our trust and God in action because it takes a lot to see the end from the beginning. Mm. It takes a lot to see the end from the beginning. The reason is it's about our faith and trust in God is because in order for us to get to the end that I see and desire to have, I must fully put my trust in God. I have to know that there is always an in between. And it's the in between <laughs> that sometimes gives us problems. So we have the beginning and we have the end. But it says vision is seeing the end from the beginning. So this definitely is dealing with our faith. We're talking our spiritual faith. We're, we're talking because God gives us vision right? He gives us the vision and he shows how things are going to be. And then it's the in-between that has to be worked out, right? So we're talking spiritual vision here. Jesus came to the earth to die for our sins, right? Mm -hmm. He knew and understood the vision from the beginning. He understood the, the vision from the beginning, right? The end he understood. Why? Because the vision was that he was going to come down here. He was going to die on the cross. He knew from the very beginning he was going to die on the cross for us. He fully understood the vision that I have for my life right now that my, that my father, God, his father, gave him. See, we got to remember where our vision is coming from, right? So his vision, the vision was to come down, die on the cross, so that we can have eternal life, right? Yet, he had to pray to the Father to help him in the Garden of Gethsemane. 
he had to pray to the father to help him to accept the will of the fathers. So in other words, I, 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 I see this, I understand my purpose. I understood that I was called to, to die so that they can have eternal life, right? So sometimes we understand the vision that God has given to us because the Bible says, you know, have the vision, write the vision, make it plain. So now we're talking God-given vision. So God is given vision. And I tell people, if God gives a vision, he gives provision. Mm -hmm. um, why? because the provision becomes the in-between, right? So in other words, Jesus understood, he knew the ending, he knew how it was gonna be, but the in-between, the in-between mm. got kind of difficult. The in-between, the beginning of the vision and the end of the vision got a little difficult there because it got to a point where he wanted to know, could the cup be removed? In other words, do I have to really die on the cross that way? You know, is this the only way that they can have eternal life? You know, is it that way? So what am I saying? I'm saying even though God gives us vision and we actually see and understand what God is saying the end is going to be, the vision is, there are times when we struggle in the vision. We yeah. struggle with what we know has to happen. We struggle with what we see because we see how this ending is going to be. And we struggle because we know there's an in-between. So this is why it's so important that we got to have faith and trust in God. It, you, when God gives us vision and he makes it plain and he lets us see, right? Then we have to trust the visionary. We have to trust the fact that Jesus Christ, that God has given it to us. So, so, so I constantly say, the Lord says, for I know the plans that I have for you, right? To, 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 to not harm you, to prosper you, to give you a hope and a future. See, he understands the in-between. So that is why we have to stay connected to God when he gives us a vision. We have to That's trust good. him when he gives us the vision. Why? Because he understands the, the in-between. And don't be weary in well-doing because Jesus himself had a, had a, had a little problem with the in-between. Okay? He himself had a little problem. So it doesn't mean it's always going to be easy. Sometimes you have to fight to get what God has in store for you. So sometimes God can show us stuff, right? We yeah. know God said, well, I promised you this and I promised you that. You know, he gave us vision in reference to something in our lives, with our families, with our children, on our jobs, um, spiritually, educational-wise. But sometimes, you know, you, you have to fight and you have to pray for it. You have to ask God to, 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 to help you. The, the other day we talked about a scripture that said, the Lord said that I will strengthen you. Why, why is God saying that to us? Because he know we would sometimes get tied with the in between, with the end, with the beginning of the vision and the ending of the vision. The Lord know there'll be times when we will get tired. Yes. Just like he did. That's what I love about God. He ain't asked, Jesus Christ ain't asking us to do nothing that he didn't do. Right. One thing that he didn't do. And, 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 and he keeps it so real. He does. Why? Because he got to a point where he was tired and he wanted to know this is Jesus Christ. Do you, do you understand? So don't give up on the vision because you're tired. Don't feel bad about Good. yourself because doing this process of seeing this ending that you know you're trying to get to. Don't, don't, don't give up on yourself and don't beat yourself down because why? Jesus Christ Come on. got tired. Jesus Christ needed to be strengthened. So, 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 so let's keep that in mind. So, so I, I wanted to share with you some of the, the, some of the examples in the Bible where God showed the vision um, in the beginning, right? Where God began to break down to, to some of the um, apostles and some of the saints in the Bible, what was going to happen. So let's talk about Moses. And you know, I love this. It says a vision for eternity. Yes. See, God gives us vision for eternity. Because why? The stuff that God has promised you, the, th the stuff he has spoken to your life, the vision, the things that he said, hey, hey, Sharon, you know, yes, I've, I've called you to be this. Shay, I've called you to be that. Yeah, he, this is, this is for life. So it's, it's, an, it's a vision for eternity. So let's talk about Moses. So now Exodus, Exodus 
3, 9, and 10 says, And now the cry of the Israelites had reached me. And this is God. This is God. God is talking, right? Um, he's talking with Moses. This is, this is when Moses was the whole burning bush scene. So he says, and now the cry of the Israelites have reached me, and I have seen the way the Egyptians are oppressing them. So now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. Okay, so now let's talk about Moses and the vision that God gave Moses. Let's, let's talk about that really quick. The, the vision that God gave to Moses was what? To deliver the Israelites out of Egypt. That is what he told him from the very beginning. So he showed him what the end was. The end was, you're going to deliver the Israelites out of Egypt. Seeing the, the vision, seeing the end of it before the beginning, before the in between. So another part of it was what? He had to go to Pharaoh. He had to go back to his past. Mm. See, see, sometimes when God is, is giving vision and showing us stuff, because why? We're doing it the way God said. This is not my vision. This is what God is giving me. So sometimes God is going to give it in a way I might not want it. But I have to trust him and I have to have faith that he had, knows what's best for me. So now, another thing was, um, he do, was he was a part of was delivering the Israels out of Egypt. He had to go to Pharaoh, um, go back to his past. So in other words, he had to be God's mouthpiece. So that's basically what it was. So he saw the end. The end was, you're going to deliver the Israelites, the children of Israel out of Egypt. You're going to go to Pharaoh. Um, you got to face your past, and you're going to be my mouthpiece. So the vision, the vision was for Moses to deliver the Israelites out of Egypt. He saw the ending. He knew the goal was for them to be delivered. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Shay is, Shay is over here in these comments. Like, I know she hollering. She said, she, she said, I think that, uh, she said, I think that is where we get confused and run away from the vision. We think the hard times in between may mean God didn't give us the vision. And then Woo! she then she just posted, my God, sometimes God's vision for you makes you have to go back to your past to yes. be mouth, mouth, mouthpiece. She said that fire right there. Yes, Shay, that, I'm telling you, that's how he began to break it down. You know, he, he like, sometimes, you know, because why? It's, we, we're saying we're trusting God, right? We're saying that we're trusting with our lives. We're saying, Lord, have your way. You know, let your will be done in my life. So now he gives us vision. Now he gives us vision, you know, so, so it was the in between that required him to have faith, to trust God. I need you to get that. It was the in between. Ooh. What'd you get ready to say, Gwen? <laughs> no, I just, I just, I just had to, to, to let, to get on your face. I was like, wait, it's the in between. Girl, you, you mm, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, the, the Holy Spirit said it was the in between mm. that has us to have to have faith and trust God. Come the on. going back to a land that he ran from, that going back to his past. How many of you know God will sometimes send us right back to face our past? Come on. Why? Because he wants us to know that not even our past has anything over us when he gives us vision. Mm. Not even your past has say so over the vision that God has for you. The vision that God has for your life is so much greater. It's greater than your past. So he faced his past. Then, you know, because remember now, he had to now go back to a land where he had already killed somebody, where all this stuff had came out that he really wasn't Egyptian, right? Mm -hmm. So now he had to go back and face Pharaoh, um, you know, and basically say, hey, the Lord said, my God said to, I am that I am said to let these people go. Mm -hmm. Now, keep this in mind. These are people who have been in slavery for hundreds of years, and they are building um, the city for Pharaoh, right? So now Moses is coming. Moses the killer, Moses, you know, all of this stuff that went on with him before he left, coming back now trying to tell Pharaoh the king what he has to do. Isn't that just like God? <laughs> <laughs> I tell people God got jokes. Oh my I got God. jokes. <laughs> I got jokes. 
Okay. His vision for our lives is so big that it's like, let me show you there's nothing you can't do. Mm -hmm. Let me show you through me, when I give vision for your life, it supersedes anything and anybody. Mm -hmm. He didn't care about Pharaoh. He didn't care about Pharaoh being the king. All he knew was, this is the vision for Moses' life right now. This is the vision. So God will sometimes send us right back to face, you know, our past, right? But how many of you do know that what's so amazing is God wants us to know that not even our past has authority over us when he gives us vision. So I need you to understand that your past has no authority over you. No, it doesn't. So he faced his past. Not only that, he's facing his past. Now he's dealing with plagues. So now he's being God's mouthpiece and he's saying to, to, to Pharaoh, well, listen, if you don't let these people go, then God's going to do this. If you don't let him go, then he's going to do this. And what happens? Each time it happens. Each time is making Pharaoh more angry and angrier and angrier. So what am I trying to say right there? I'm trying to say, don't you know everybody ain't going to be happy with your vision that God has given to you? Ooh, come on. Don't you know there's going to be people in your past who wants to cast doubt on who God has called you to be and what he has told you to do? Yes. So it doesn't matter how many times God proves over and over that I call Valerie, that I call Shay, that I call Pam, I call Ashley, I call Wyatt. It doesn't matter. I call Cynthia. It doesn't matter. People are going to still doubt you. I call Peyton. I, I, they're they're going to still doubt you right? And they're going to still refuse to listen. Sister Helen, they, I called you. So now, Pharaoh didn't care what kind of plagues came his way. He was still um, stubborn to Moses, right? He didn't want to hear it. He didn't want to accept this vision that Moses had that he was given by God. See, this is what I love about it. The vision was given by God, right? So now plague after plague, until finally, Pharaoh released the people only for them to get to the Red Sea. You know what, what, what was so amazing about that particular point right there? So now God is giving, because we're talking about the in-between, right? We're talking about trusting God. We're talking about God gives you vision, but there's an in-between, right? So now he, he finally, all this stuff God done spoke and he done did, finally they're released and they're, they're leaving Egypt, right? And what happens? Like in any vision that God give us, we hit a roadblock. We get to the Red Sea. And now we're saying, God, you said, right? See, that's what we got to do. We got to now give it back to God. Yes. See, the in-between, the trusting God and having faith requires us to be able to give it back to God and say, okay, Lord, I, this is the vision you gave me. I've done everything that you said, Father. I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm trusting you. I'm, 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 I'm having faith. I'm walking this thing out, God, in the spirit. So now, Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm stuck. I'm here. I'm at this, this crossroad right here, God. I need you to come in. I need you to do something. So sometimes in the vision, you need God to give provision. Mm -hmm. You need God to come in and give finance. Sometimes you just need God to just build you up just a little bit. Build up your confidence level just a little bit, right? So your Red Sea could be a different things for you right but but this particular case it was now you got all these people and now you got pharaoh coming after them but how many of you know that the god that we serve that we have we trust and the god that we 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 use our faith with because faith without action is dead right so the the same god who gave the vision hmm. he provides the provision so so we know the story what happened he he takes the rod right and he stretches the rod out Sure, you know, and, and, and all of that. Now, li now, let me get this, let me make this very clear to you. When he got to that, that roadblock, that Red Sea, don't think those same people he just delivered Come was on. all in his life. <laughs> oh, yeah, see, you, you got to understand this. When God gives vision, everybody, even if they're enjoying and participating in the vision, as soon as there's a roadblock, people want to start complaining. They're benefiting from the vision. Yes, yes. You done benefited from it for years. You done benefited from it from weeks. You done benefited from it. Now, when it looks like, hey, there's a problem, right? 
how, how are we going to get up out of this situation? You know, how God's going to fix this? What are we going to do? Because we need this and we need that. And, you know, sometimes the same thing that happens in churches. You know, sometimes leadership in church, things hit a roadblock. So now, the, the same people that you done been there with, praying for, fasting with, those same people that Moses just delivered out of slavery. Mm, do you come understand on. that? Yeah. Yes. The division that God gave him allowed them to be free from slavery, from being beat, from being killed, their firstborns being killed. But yet, division, now you want to complain to Moses. Mm -hmm. so, so, so now think about this. It, it, it is not easy sometimes when God gives vision. This is why we got to trust him and have faith. Because now he done brought these people here. Now they're stuck here. Pharaoh's army is on the way to get them. And now he's listening to them complain, right? But the God that we serve, this is what we always got to remind ourselves. This is why I trust you. This is why I have faith. This is why I, I believe you gave me the vision, God. You're going to take care. You're going to provide for me. So what does he do? He have him stretch the rod out and what happens? We know the story. The, the, it opens up, right? And they go across. But remember I said the other day, God gives us strategic instruction. Yes. So for the vision, he gives strategic instruction. What did he say to Moses? And yes. let me make this clear to you. He did not give instruction to anyone else. Right. He gave it to Moses because it was the vision that he gave Moses. I need you to catch that right there. Sometimes we are constantly asking people questions. Well, what should I do? Why don't you go to the person who gave you the vision? Come on. <laughs> Yes. Why don't you go to the visionary? Yes. That's because when Moses got into that situation, Moses didn't look to God and say, what do I do? That's good. So the one who gave him the vision, praise God, gave him strategic instruction and told him to do what? Put yes. that rod across that. And what happened? It parted the Red Sea. We're talking about vision, meaning God gives you the ending before he gives you the in-between. Because why? He needs you to trust him enough to make it to the end that he done showed you for your life. Oh, yes. He has greatness for us. He has greatness for us. So, so like I said, so what happens? He stretches out. They go forth. Um, you know, and, and, and they, they're, they're saved. Matter of fact, when their enemy tried to do the same thing. Oh, this is good. When their enemy tried to do the same thing, they died. Don't you know when God gives you vision for your life, everybody can't yes. walk in that thing? Yes. Everybody can't walk that out like you. Why? Because God has chosen this yes. for you. God has favored you. God has called you. That's why sometimes you can't always ask people when God done told you something. Mm -mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, so when, they, when, when Pharaoh and them tried to, to, to partake in the, in the success of the vision, Woo, they died. See, mm. everybody will not partake in the success of the vision that God has for your life. Sometimes we will have to leave some behind. Do you understand me? Mm. Everybody will not be going where God is taking you. No, Pharaoh and them couldn't come. Why? Because they would have destroyed and killed the vision. Come on. So God had to say, let me show you right now. I'm going to wipe them out. So God is letting us know he's going to wipe out some things on our behalf. Why? Because he gives vision and his vision will come to pass. That's it. And he will give you the strength you need, saints, to go through it. Just like Moses. We all have red seas in our lives. We all come up against things. We all come up against people who are like, I don't know. I don't know. You shouldn't have did that. Girl, I don't know. I don't know. You, know you, you, sure, you sure the Lord told you to go back to school? You, know, you, you sure you sure the Lord told you to leave that job and go to that job? Oh, you understand me? Yeah. Are you girl? No, 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 no. See, everybody can't go. They can't. So it is no different if God says go back to college. The vision is you're walking across the stage getting your degree. God yeah. is saying go back to college and get that degree. Yeah. That's the vision right? See, sometimes it ain't always just spiritual. Let's, let's go on the natural because God gives us vision for all areas of our lives. You got to realize vision is not just God speaking on a spiritual note for our spiritual growth. Why? Because God says, I'll perfect the things that concern you. So that means everything that concerns me, right? So, so the Lord may say, go back to college. So 
you're going to go. I want you to go. I want you to get that degree. So the vision is walking across, getting that degree. The faith and trust is not giving up. Hmm. Doing the homework, going to class. <laughs> Even when you're the oldest one sitting in the class. <laughs> yes. And everybody else is these 19 and 20 year old kids. And, and you're sitting there like, Lord, my brain is trying to comprehend this stuff. But what is it? I, I'm trusting God for the vision. Come on. I'm trusting him to give me faith and, and, and to help me with the in-between, right? Yes, yes. So, so sometimes you may not even want to go back to school. Yeah. So Ashley you got to believe. Ashley said, I personally feel straightened out, okay? <laughs> We all do, honey. Come on now. That's it. We got to believe that God knows why he's telling you to do something that you yourself didn't see or didn't even want to do. So you got to remember that. A lot of times, you think Moses really wanted to go do that? Do you really think Moses wanted to go face his past like that? Deal with Pharaoh deal, and then deal with complaining people? You know, bringing the, pl the plagues? Do you really think? So now, sometimes, it, it's not even that we want to do it. You know, it's because God is requiring it of our lives. And why? We love him. Right. We obey him and we trust him. Come on. Right? That's what this is about. Yeah. That's what the, 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 the success of the vision is about. We, this, this, we ain't doing this Christian walk just to be doing it. I am not going to church on Sunday and Thursday nights just to be going, just to say, oh, I go to church. Mm -mm. I am not seeking God's face in the secret place, praying. I'm not trying to love my neighbor, loving my neighbor like I love myself. I'm not, you know, keeping peace in my home and loving my husband and my kids the way God say just because. Oh, no. This is about the plan that God has for our lives. Yes. So this is about our, the vision that he has for us. So you know what the Lord said? He says, see, it's easy to accept the vision when you want the vision. Right. <laughs> oh, yes. You know, sometimes God will come and he'll say, hey, I, 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 I'm, I'm, he'll speak a vision at a brand new house. He'll speak a vision that I'm going to ordain you. And if that's something that you want, oh, wow, you're excited about the vision. <laughs> you're going to do the in-between without any problems to God. What you say, Jesus? Is there something else you want me to do? You want me to stand on my head till the next day, Jesus? <laughs> Why? Because you want it. Yes. But the issue becomes, and the problem becomes, when we don't want it. When we don't want to hear what God is saying to us as far as the vision and the plans that he has for our lives. When it's not lining up with what we want for our lives. But what we have to know is, we have to continue to trust God. Why? Because the ending that he has for us is greater than our beginning. Yeah. The ending that he has is greater than the beginning. So now once we, so since we are submitted to the father, we must trust him because he knows the plans. He knows the in-between. He knows the in-between. So before I go into our next example of, you know, trusting God and understanding the vision, does anyone have anything they want to say? Anybody, you know, I'm reading the chat as I go to and Sister Gwen is reading them for me. So some of some of your comments I, I am seeing. Listen. Yes. Listen. 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 <laughs> There's so that word is so pregnant. I mean, it, 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 it's so much in there. But let, let me just bite off a little piece. Come on. In two. Yes. That part about God gonna send you back to your past. Yeah. Yes. Come on. Because you got to be able to speak in authority to say that might have been who I was there. Yes. And in this in-between, I developed in my authority. Ooh, this is who I am now. So yes. you can come to me and lie to me about who I am now because that's who I was then. Yes. Come on. Come on. Yes. You know what I'm Like, I got to be able to take authority over to say, no, nope, you, you don't get me there. Nope, I'm not going to be deceived on that. Nope, I'm not going to falter. You know, yes. I mean, I feel because that's who I was then, but now yes. I progressed in him, and this is what yes. it's sad. Okay, it. <laughs> I love it. Yes, is anyone else that that all things were good. but you didn't have to step on my toes about college, though. That's all <laughs> <laughs> I love oh my it. god, Ashley, it's it's my either. <laughs> Come on, Valerie. 
She says, I need this today, especially after all these years. Let me tell you something, baby. So he says, I'm going to restore this. Yes, the right. Baby girl, yes. I'm going to restore them. So like, yes. like, he's the maker of the years, honey. Yes. Ooh, I love that. He said, I'm going to work all that stuff together for your yes. good. You had yes. the vision is yet for an appointed time. And it says it will not be behind one day. Yes. So no matter how many years, girlfriend. Yes. Uh, I was listening to something, too, the other Ooh. day. Um, they were talking about all the things. Oh, oh, it was um, it was a uh, brother Lavar, Kevin Lavar. Uh -huh. He was talking about all the time that it took for these men of God in the Word, you know, to develop, right? And and for the for the the like with Joseph, how long it took for his vision to come to pass with Moses, with with Noah, with and I was thinking about it, and it was like the time, the length of time for yes. their vision to come come to pass it looked like it had a direct correlation with the impact that they were supposed to have, right? Mm. So Noah, he was basically saving a whole generation. Like yes. he was saving, he was, so it took a hundred and it took a hundred years for him to finish the ark, right? And uh, uh, Joseph, Joseph was a teenager when he had the dream about them bowing down to him. But I think it was 40 years before they came before him and he was able to say, look, I forgive you. And God sent me ahead of you to preserve. So he, mm. he saved generations. So the longer it takes, honey, the bigger the, the, bigger the, the deliverance, the bigger the vision, the bigger yes. the impact. So don't worry about how long it's taken. You That's just right. need to make sure that you are preparing in the, in the image. Yes. And, and you, you know, know that what? thing right there. So that's so hot. In, 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 in between. Because our ladder shall be greater. Greater. Thank oh, you. Oh, I walk in that thing. I, that I ladder shall be greater. Okay. Oh, shall be greater. Thank oh, you. Yes. Oh, oh, yes. I, so I'm we don't have to long for what we had. Yes. I, no. I, I'm telling y'all right now, I'm enjoying my 50s. I, I'm, I'm oh. really, I love that. I mean, you yeah. hear me? Yeah. I, and then after seeing Angela Bassett at 60, I was like, I think I'm <laughs> There is still more, honey, to reach for. Yes. <laughs> Our ladder shall be greater. Yes. Yes. Come on. Because why? We trust God and we have faith in God. You yeah. understand? Yeah. We trust him and we have faith in him. So when he gives the vision, we yes. believe he, he provides the provision. He said, I'm you the author the and the finisher. Yes. Yes. Not only that, you got to remember, when we say provision, a lot of times we think finances. But how many of you know provision is wisdom? Come on. How many of you know provision is, is knowledge and understanding? Yes. Oh, yes. I'll, I, 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 I'll give you wisdom. I'll provide it, provision. I'll provide you wisdom to, to get to maneuver through situations. Come on. I'm going to provide you with health and strength. Yes. I'm going to renew yes. your youth like the eagles. Yes. Woo, Lordy Jesus. He yes. Great like God. that, Shay. Yes. What God has said this year. <laughs> Can you unmute yourself, Cynthia? Cynthia says she has something to say. Uh-huh. I got her. Okay. Go ahead, Cynthia. Can she hear us? She's unmuted. I can't hear you. Cynthia? Oh, Valerie. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. She's unmuted. Let me. No, Cynthia's still muted. I okay, go ahead, Cynthia. We can't hear ah, you. Can't hear you. What did she say? Uh-uh, I can't hear her. Yeah, we can't hear you, Cynthia. Well, really quick, while Cynthia is getting her um, sound together, I just want to say the provision. I was telling Kim this earlier today. Um of how great God is and an example of that provision. So in, in my current job, God is really blessing me in, in a place of elevation. And, and he has put me in a place where um, on paper, I don't necessarily have the skill set to be where he's placed me. 
But every time I go into a boardroom, oh, it's about to make me cry because I think about something that Pastor Joanne prophesied over me when I got rebaptized last, last September. Every time I go into a boardroom and I'm orchestrating a meeting or facilitating a meeting, God endows me with wisdom mm -hmm. and gives me provision of that so I know how to direct the conversation. And because of that, he keeps bringing me before a greater and greater crowd of people. Come on, baby. I remember he's that prophecy. He's just opening more doors and more yeah. doors. Yes, I remember doors. that prophecy. I remember when you that. Got baptized. I remember that. That's yeah. when you got baptized, right, Shay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. Yeah, just type. Can you type what you wanted to say? Yeah, type what you're saying, Sam. Say since we can't hear you. Say, you sure you don't have. I'm trying to see why. It's Are you turned up? Yeah, is, is your volume up? Valerie said, I felt so discouraged today. I hope your, your spirits are lifted now, honey. Oh, yes, Valerie, because I you hope you're reminded right. of who God is. He's committed to you, honey. He's taking care yes. of you. He is, the, he is the giver of the vision, and he's the one that's going to make sure that it comes to pass. Yes. We, we can have confidence in the in-between, honey. I love that. I love that. In the oh, in yes. Yeah. See, we, we, why? Because we, we trust the vision that God has Come given for our lives. We, we, we cry. Yes, he does. We walk in this thing. We have faith in this thing. Even yeah. like I said, when we're, when we're weary, you know, you, yeah. Jesus was weary, but that don't mean um, the vision wasn't the vision for your life that God gave. Right. See, sometimes in our weariness, you know, the enemy will make us think, oh, you wasn't called to do that. You wasn't supposed to do that. No, no, no. Yeah. God, why did he say be not um, weary and well-doing? Why? Because he knew it was coming. Yes. You know, he knew we would feel a certain way. Yeah. But, 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 but he is also our God who says, I will strengthen you. Yes, come on. Oh, oh my God, that thing just does something to me. I will strengthen you. Why? Because he knows Kim's going to need strength. Valerie's going to need strength. Shay, Cynthia, all of us, we're going to need strength. Cynthia, call me on my phone. Okay, so so I'm, I'm going to wait till she call you before we get into the... Can you, can you hear? She said... She said, just took... It took me seven years to get my house. I had to trust God for the vision he showed me. I was turned down so many times. Wow. Seven years. Wow. Oh, Lord. But, but you got it. Come but on. You got it. Thank you. But you got it. That's Come right. Don't make me run around this house. <laughs> but you got it. Okay. it don't, you know, the Bible says when the, um, it says hope deferred makes the heart sick. But Ooh. when the desire comes. It yes. is a tree of life. Yes. And, you know, we want to be careful. The Bible says to guard our hearts also with all diligence. So we want to guard our hearts so that it doesn't become sick. But what, what that scripture is telling us is when your desire comes, it's a tree of life. Like, it doesn't matter how long it took when it comes. <laughs> like, it's like having a baby. You, you completely forget all the pain you endured as soon as that baby's here. It's like, it, it, you, you just magically forget. And that's how it is when that thing that you've been done, when that vision comes to pass, it doesn't matter how long it took. It's, right. it is, it is perfect. And, right. and, and, and you literally, you just, now all you can do is look, look forward and live in it. It's a treat right. of life. That was right. she bought her first home 63 years ago. Come on now. No, she said she bought her first home at 63. Uh, at 63 years? Oh, my God. Oh, come that's on That's beautiful. That's because our ladder shall be greater. I, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> yes. That's yes. what the word of God says. Our, our ladder shall ladder be greater. Shall be greater. Yes. Our ladder. Come our on. ladder shall it. be greater. So no, you got to believe what God has told you about your life. Shay said, like my vision of when my husband comes. Yes. That's right, Shay. Right. That's right. That's right. On, you baby. speak that. Because what? Life and death is in the power of our tongue. Come on, Valerie. You can't so, so give up. So you got to understand the vision that God has given you. Yeah. You have to. And you can't compare your vision to someone else's. And you can't compare the timing to somebody else's. That's right. You can't look at them and say, oh, it looks like everything's happening for them and not for you. Like that's, 
because we're running our race. Remember, Kim said we're all running our own individual race. Your race requires endurance for what God has called you to do, what, what for the vision he set before you. And every single one of us is a gold medalist. So you ain't got to worry about whether somebody gets to, to the finish line, to their finish line, Ooh. or you get to yours. Valerie, come on. That's what with said. the worst credit in my with life. The credit in my life, God still blessed her with a home. See, now that is when God says, I will super, the vision supersedes in your past. Yes. You the vision doesn't even make sense to the natural man. No. See, That's this not. is, let's keep it real here. When, when Moses got it to that Red Sea and he just reached out with a rod and it opened up and the people walked over on dry land, that is what God did for Valerie. Do you understand what I'm saying? When I said we have situations where we feel like we're in front of a Red Sea. Yeah. But God said, let me show you who I am to you. Yeah. Let me show you how much I love you for trusting me, for having faith in me and not giving up. Yeah. So see, we got to hold on to what God tells us. Yes. Like, like Cynthia said, she said she kept trying for seven years to get a house, kept getting turned down, but the Lord blessed her with that house. Yeah. So now they share their testimonies right now and, and it's blessing Peyton because that's Peyton's desire. Oh, you yes. yes. You understand what I'm saying? So what does that mean? If God can do it for them, he can do it for me. Come on. He can do it for me. Yes. So, so that, that tells you age ain't nothing to God. Age Come ain't on. nothing to God. Shay said, God said to me before I got on God's stalker, stop putting me in a box with your limited faith. I can do anything because Ooh. I am God. Hello. Hello. Uh, yeah. That's wow. it. He can do anything. Wow. He yeah. sure can. Yeah. He's not like yes. us. Yeah. You, we, 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 we tear up and we get happy when we hear about the goodness of the Lord. When we, when we take a look back and see what he's done, how he's been faithful to us. How he's, he's been faithful to the vision. Woo, Jesus. See, God is faithful to the vision sometimes when we ain't even faithful to it. there. Yeah, come on. Yes, he yeah. is faithful to the vision. So, so yes, thank you, Valerie and Cynthia, for sharing. He's faithful. So, yeah. so let's get into the next person because this one right here, when the Holy Ghost began to break this particular, um, hey, sweetie, don't give up. God called me in 2001 and showed me laying hands and preaching all over the world. And as of the day, I'm not doing it yet, but I trust him. It will come to pass. That's right, Cynthia. You trust him. You trust him. You trust him because we got to believe that God said it. Yep. See, that's the biggest thing right there with vision and the vision that God gives you for your life. Do you believe he gave it? And do you believe he said it? Yeah. Because see, People going to laugh at you. People going to talk about you. You know, they're going to do those things. You don't think Moses got laughed at? Moses, who had a speech problem. You understand me? You don't think it was difficult for him to go and do this, live this vision out, walk this thing out like God had said it? Yes, people are going to do, people are going to talk. But you hold on to what God has said to you. You hold on to what he has spoke to you in your spirit about you about the plans he has for you. So, so let's talk about Jonah, vision for eternity. Let's talk about Jonah. Jonah, the first chapter, verses one through two, says this in the NIV. Hold on one minute, let me move this. It says, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, I may be pronouncing it wrong, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness comes up before me. Mm -hmm. Woo, Jesus. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it because its wickedness has come up before me. Woo, mm -hmm. Jesus. So see, sometimes, let's talk about the vision that was given to Jonah. He had to preach to the people of Nineveh right that was see because we said that the vision shows us majority of the time the ending right yep. it shows us the ending not even the in between god says well i'm, I'm calling you to minister i'm calling you to this and, and and he's showing you the vision the ending right so he had to go preach to the people in Nineveh, preach against their wickedness right and the other thing that I put there that he had to do, um, preach to the people of Nineveh, preach against their wickedness, and 
there was one more slide. Um, he had to be God's mouthpiece, just like Moses. See, because how many of you know when God gives vision, he ain't giving you vision just to sit and be quiet. Hello. <laughs> he ain't giving us vision to sit and be quiet. He ain't giving us vision for nothing. Because vision brings life. Vision brings deliverance. Vision brings change, right? So, okay, so now, when we're his mouthpiece, life and death is in our mouth. So, it, vision, vision. So, sometimes the vision God gives it goes totally against what you want. <laughs> what you want to do, what you want to see, what you want to hear. Jonah didn't want to hear any of this. Mm -hmm. He didn't. But how many of you know we must still follow the plans that God has for us? Because mm -hmm. we don't want to be like Jonah. <laughs> we don't want to have to go through all that drama and still have to live out the vision. <laughs> Why didn't he just do it to begin with? This yes. is what I like is that Jonah knew exactly what he was supposed to do. It wasn't even like he was questioning. But, but he didn't want to do it. See, let's keep it real. Like, if we're talking honest here. Everything God tells us we don't want to do. Come on. No, we don't. Yeah. Everything he's showing us we don't want to do. Yes. Yes. You, you're going to be leaving this job. But God, I'm comfortable here. The people like me here. Um, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm, in a, uh, I'm in a good leadership position here. No, 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 I, I need you to get ready because I'm moving you. But I, I don't want to move, Jesus. I, I don't want to go. Right. Oh, I'm taking you to a higher level in ministry. Oh, I'm, I'm going to need you to start fasting. I'm gonna need, but no, Jesus, I, I don't want to start doing that. I, I, no, no. So see, everything God tells us, we don't want to do. So let's, let's keep it real now. So we, let's don't be too harsh on Jonah because sometimes we're Jonah right now. We're, we're Jonas. So now... He gives him this vision. Like he tells him, you know, no, no. So Jonah decides he ain't doing it. <laughs> he ain't doing it. He ain't doing it. Just like we decide sometimes. Why? Because we don't want to do it. We don't like what the end of the vision is. You know, I, I don't want to go to preach down there. I don't want to preach against their wickedness. I don't want to do it. Right? So now, because of his disobedience, because how many of you know what God has for you is going to be for you? What God has for you is for you. And it don't change unless he decides to change it. Thank you. Hezekiah. You understand me? So now you can try to run. You can try to do this. You can try to do that. But when you totally submit to God, you're going to find yourself facing that same vision that God said, I have for your life. Yep. That same vision is going to be smacking you in your face. So now what does he do? He runs and he <laughs> ends up getting thrown over the board, getting swallowed by the fish. All of this stuff. Why? But what I like, but wait, I like it that he said he when the storm came, he said, Look, I'm the problem. Just throw me out. <laughs> Just get rid of me. Cause and he because he knew. He knew that his disobedience has caused the trouble for the people he was with. But 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 you but, but let me tell you this about Jonah. Let me tell you about Jonah. Even though Jonah was running from the vision and the plans that God has for his life. When it, like Sister Gwen came, when it came time for them to throw him over, disobedient Jonah, running from the vision, you know what he said? He said, it's me, my God. He called himself a servant of the Lord. He said, my God. Do you understand? He knew he was being disobedient to his God. So he, in other words, he said, throw me over, right? Let me tell you why I believe Jonah was so confident in the fact, just said, listen, just throw me over. It don't need for all of us, all of y'all to die. Just throw me over. Because even in his disobedience and the running away from the vision, he understood there was a call on his life. He understood that the same God controlled the sea. You understand me? He understood the same God controlled the sea. Yes. Oh, yes. So, so yes. I, I, okay, throw me over because I, I'm just going to just trust that this God that I'm running from, who I'm his servant, is going gonna, is gonna to handle this situation. Yeah. He ain't, oh my God, even though I can't see the vision, and mm -hmm. I don't even believe in it. Come on. But God said, I am that I say that you are. He's going to take care of me. Yes. See, we got to understand that. See, sometimes we don't see in us what God sees. Yes. We just don't. We don't see the greatness that God sees in us. We don't see, oh, 
I'm, I'm going to open this door, Kim. I'm going to do this, Kim. We, no, we don't see it sometimes. So, 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 so we need to understand that whatever God has for us is going to be, unless he changes it. It's going to be. So we can try to run, but when it comes, and what I, what I mean by that, I mean, if you're going to submit and, and go to heaven, then you're going to follow his vision. Yeah. Hello. So if you're submitting to God yeah. and you want to die and go to heaven, you are going to line up with his vision eventually. You're going to do it. There's no way around it because it's what he says. So now Jonah, we know the story. He goes and he gets thrown up out of the, 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 the fish's belly and all of this stuff. And, and um, he had to go minister to a group of people and he didn't feel um, they were worthy. <laughs> He's a trip. Well, let's let's be honest. You know, the a part of the problem was Jonas. He could, he he could have been a little racist. I don't know. Right. But, 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 but he felt basically they ain't good enough for me to go minister to. <laughs> Typically, you know. Let's keep it real. See, the vision is not ours; it's God's. Come on, hello. So, God don't care what you think. Right. If He's calling you to do it, you better walk that thing out and do it. He don't care what you think about the people that you're going to minister to. He don't care about the people that now you're going to be working with on the new job. All God wants and is requiring of you is to do what he said. Yes. Why? Because he understands the vision. So sometimes the in-between can go smooth or we can be like Jonah. <laughs> and God has to allow us to get in certain situations before we totally submit to the vision. Why? Because he knows the plans that he has for us. So what happens when God shows you vision for your life that you don't want? What do we do? What, are, what should we do? We should continue to trust him. We should have faith. We should ask him to give us strength, just like Jesus Christ did in the Garden of Gethsemane. When, he, when the vision was, he had to die on the cross, and it got hard. So, so God ain't saying to us, the vision that I give you is always easy. He ain't saying that. He's saying you need to do it. Wow. You need to tap into me. You need to ask me for strength. Because the Bible says certain things come by fasting and praying. Right? So now maybe you need to fast a little more. Maybe you need to, to pray a little more. But at the end of the day, saints, it is his vision for our lives that we need and want. At the end of the day, it has to be about the vision that God has for our lives and not what we want, not what we think. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, 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 yes. So the vision is not always rosy. The in-between, you got me? The in-between is not always rosy. It ain't always what we want. But, if it's, but, but is it our will to obey God? Our will to obey God has to override any of our flesh. Yeah. Anything that I want to do, anything that I don't want to do, the, 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 my love for God has to override that. My vision has, for the vision that God has <laughs> for my life has why to override it, why it. Why is it? Stop picking on me. <laughs> <laughs> it has to. We'll let y'all work that out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's our growing season, Sharon. You're right. It, 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 it becomes about that. Why? Because God has such a bigger plan for us. He does. He has such a bigger plan yes. for your life. Yes. 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 And sometimes, oh my God, sometimes our self-esteem and our self-confidence, we can't see it. Right. But God say, I called you to be great. I yes. made you great. Yes. You are who I say that you are. And, yes. and, and, and as you submit to me, as you, as, as you let me, you know, love on you and yes. build you up, you're going to start seeing and believing it. You're yes. going to start walking this thing out. You understand me? You're, so, so I can imagine Moses. Moses with the speech problem. Moses, the first time he went to Pharaoh, he could have been stuttering a little bit. You understand me? But by the second time, God had given him, you know, some grace and some strength. Moses, you can do this. So his, his speech was a little better. By the third time, by the third plague, it was better. By the fourth plague, do you understand what I'm mm -hmm. saying to you? Yes. God is with us doing the vision. He's, he's giving provision. He just didn't give us vision and say, hey, you're on your own. Come on. No, 
he, he, he gave us vision and said, I'm going to provide provision, wisdom, knowledge, instruction, strategic instruction for you. Mm. Oh, yes. I, I said on Saturday, God is committed to our success. Yes. He, he ain't do all this for us to fail. No, God wants us to win. He wants us, but right, the vision is bigger. He wants us to see the vision that he has for our lives. Ashley, yes, said, Ashley, Ashley said, I told Auntie when I started on here with y'all, it was like the Holy Spirit is in my face saying, can you hear me now? <laughs> Girl, whatever he got to do to get the message to us, he will yes. do it. We, we need to understand that God gives us vision. So we see the end. We see who he's calling us to be. We see what he's saying about us. If, if, it's, if, it's, if it's a mate, if it's someone that you're going to marry. You know, I laugh and I say this to people all the time. I said, if, if the Lord said your husband was the bum on the corner, ooh, that's one vision you don't want to see. Ah. You're going to fight him on that. You're going to be like, I don't think so. No, 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 no. Yep. But you know what? I saw, a, I saw a, a show recently where there was this man who was a bum on the corner. He lived on the corner. He was a bum. And someone took him and they cleaned him up. When I tell you, he was one of the most handsome men that I ever seen. Do you understand me? See, God sees that. Yes. That's why we have to go by the vision that God has for our lives. Mm -hmm. Not by what our flesh wants, what our flesh sees. Yes. Because y'all know if it was up to some of our fleshes, we would have walked out on situations a long time ago. Yeah. We would have gave up on our dreams that God, like, Cynthia said it took us seven years to get her house because each time she kept getting turned down, but she knew God promised her a house. Mm -hmm. So maybe after the second time, you want to walk away. After right. the third time, no, no, we trust God through the process. Why? Because he gave the vision. And yeah. God is a God that he doesn't lie. Right. Valerie got her first house at 63. Somebody would have been like, oh, give up at 60. Give up at 61. Give up at 60. No, honey, 63 was the, was the, the number. Yes. Yes. Why? God knows the plan. Trust him with the vision that he's given you. See, you got to understand this. It's his vision. Mm -hmm. I often say, why are we always asking somebody else about the vision that God has for your life when God is the one who gave it and you ain't even asking him? Come on. Trust him for the in-between to give you the strength you need to, 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 to reach what, who he's called you to be. Yes. God has given us vision. He's promised some things, saints, and he's going to fulfill them. Yes. 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 So we got to believe that. So we talked about Moses. We talked about Jonah. What I need you to know is sometimes the vision come and we don't accept it like Jonah. Sometimes the vision come and we'll walk it out like Moses did. But at the end of the day, God was with them both. I need you to get that. Come on. God was with them both. Yes, he's growing us. He's growing us, Sharon. God was with the both of them. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Yes. So, so Jonah did eventually go and do what God called him to do with a little hesitation, with a little having to be swallowed by a fish. See, wait, we don't wait. And then when the people were delivered, he was mad. <laughs> yeah. Still mad. Yeah. Okay. But, but you know what? Why? Because the purpose was so much bigger than Jonah. You understand me? The purpose was God needed to get that message across. Yep. So we got to understand, God's not just giving vision just for us. It's a purpose behind the vision being given. Thank the you. Moses was given the vision to free the children of Israel because God understand it was so much more. Y'all understand Jesus' lineage was down that, in, that, in those deliverance of the Israelites? Yes. And now it, it, it lets us have eternal life? Yeah. It's always bigger than us. Yes. But what we got to know is that we have a God that we can trust and have faith in and he will bring us out. So mm -hmm. does anybody else have anything they want to add to that part? They because said, um, well, Sharon said she got a new job. She's a leader. She's a supervisor. But let me tell you something. Promotion, comes from, promotion comes from the Lord. And it doesn't matter how comfortable you were in your old situation. God is elevating. Remember, Pastor Joanne's talking about expansion. God's expanding us. And when he's expanding yes. us, he calls us to do things that are uncomfortable. And, and But all you got to do is step up into it because the Holy Spirit is with you. And it doesn't matter who comes against you. It doesn't matter what right. they're saying. It doesn't matter. It's about you becoming, you running your race and becoming the best version of yourself and finishing the vision that God 
he, that he that he ordained for you. And mm-hmm. I love what Shay said. Tw- she she pointed out Jeremiah 20, 20, 9, 11. I know the plans I have for you. Oh and so God. God is like, it doesn't matter how long. It doesn't matter who who doesn't like it. I know the plans that I have for you, and yes. I just you to work with me and that's it he wants you to stay disciplined to endure this race and um i love shay she said proverbs 16 9 a man's heart plans his way but the lord directs his steps so it doesn't matter. you think you think oh i'm supposed to be behind the scenes and god's like no uh-uh, I want, i'm promoting you Whoa, I'm, I'm, that, promoting. I'm bringing you before great men so these yes. are plans. so i don't care yes. what plan. your plan may have been your comp to stay in your comfort zone and my plan is to bring you out of it so that you can be a deliverer so that you can go into all the world and make disciples so that you can enjoy this race so that you can finish what i called you to do but yes that's it like, okay ashley said stop okay we're gonna stop. <laughs> <laughs> we'll stop for a second but listen we have about we have about just a little bit over 16 minutes and i want to this is so powerful I, because I just love how God is, right? Like I wasn't, I didn't quite have my everything together when we started. And I said, well, I'm just going to go ahead and push mine back and, and be over here typing away. So if you saw me, I was over here just like, like studying, putting things together very quickly. But as Kim is talking, I'm listening to the, how the Holy Spirit has lined this thing up, right? It ain't got nothing to do with me. That's the other thing. It's like, God just wants us to be in a position where we can just be used. He's like, I just want to be, a, I want to flow through you. That's all. Mm-hmm. So you, you don't have to count on your ability, your nothing. <laughs> you know, he takes those gifts, puts himself in it. And then yes. you, you yield to him and work with him. And then it's amazing what comes out. Cause yes. I couldn't have done this in the time that I had. So this thing is powerful, but he talked about, um, we talked about as the foundation for the course, um, discipline helps you to stay the course. And yes. so honey, I want to talk about staying the course. Woo, honey. Why you bringing that up, Gwen? Pam wrote, thank you God for the vision and revision in the between time. Come this on. message spoke to me in this season. That's right, he got you. He got, he got us. You. Listen, new, so the Luke 9.62 in the New King James Version, it says, no one let me see. Okay, let me go back. I hadn't seen this. This thing right here is good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted. Okay, by the scripture. So let me go back. So Luke 9, 59. Then he said to another, follow me. But he said, Lord, let me first go and bury my father. Ooh, that was him, good. Let the dead bury their own dead but you go and preach the kingdom of God. And another also said, Lord, I will follow you, but let me first go and bid them farewell who are at my house. But Jesus said to him, no one having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God, right? Mm -hmm. So staying the course is about putting your hand to the plow and not looking back. Oh, that's good. And, and, and you saw these, they, these were very, these were natural responsibilities that like were re- very reasonable things. This isn't, this isn't them caught up in sin, looking back. This is like real life responsibilities. Um, it's like, you know, my, my father has died and I just want to go bury him. And so as soon as I finish burying my father, I'm going to come back, Lord, and I'm going to follow you. Everyone, <laughs> Kim. I'm going to tell y'all something. I struggled with that scripture for years. I was like, Jesus, what are you talking about? <laughs> he was like, of course, why can't I go bury my father? Like, that's disrespectful, right? But he said, so he's saying, look, uh, let the dead bear their dead. They are, they're gone. He's like, you go and preach the kingdom, right? And then he, the other one said, look, I just, there's some folks at my house. I just need to say goodbye. I mean, that's like a... I'm telling you, they're not caught in, up in some gross sin. This is not some, they're not idolaters. They're not, it's just a regular, everyday responsibility. It's, it's hospitable. You have people in your home and you got to go do something else. You would certainly go back and just say, hey, you guys, I, I'm going to say goodbye. I had my, my brother and his family in town all weekend. I can't, I wasn't going to just leave the house and not say anything to them. But the Lord is saying, look, you, you ain't got time to say goodbye to them. <laughs> he said, because you got your hand on the plow, 
right? And you cannot look back. And the Bible says, if you are looking back, then you're just not fit. If you're coming up with every other reason and all the excuses for why you can what? Wait, let me just, let us make it very clear on this call. <laughs> I'm not selling nobody. If they if their mom or dad died, don't you go back. That's not what we're saying. That, the, what, that, what, I, I, what, that's not, I say nothing. It's what's in the scripture. Okay. No, what, what the Lord was trying to say that we, we have to understand that there will come a time in God where family issues can't come before God. Yep. You know, certain things cannot come before God. Why? Why? Why do I feel sometimes He made that particular parable? Why He used that one so strongly? Right? Because God knows when it comes to family, sometimes we will put family before God like that quickly. When it comes to family, sometimes we don't stand up for God like we should. We we don't want to we don't want to rock the boat. We don't want to, you know, feel like, you know, make our mom or our dad or our brothers feel a certain way. What I, what I believe God's trying, was trying to say to them that it, you got to be able in your heart to know, you, I'll drop anything for you, God. Yes. Come on. I'll drop anything. Right. And then when, do, I, when I make a decision to follow you, that I am going to keep the vision for eternity in front of me, and I am going to, I'm going to... Um, live like I'm, I'm gonna adopt finish line living as my lifestyle this is how i'm going to live this is how i'm going to make my decisions and this is how i'm going to line up my life and so i really wanted to to define discipline it is and i looked i think this is um a noun the practice of training people to obey rules or a code of behavior using punishment to correct disobedience and then the verb of discipline, to discipline someone, is to train someone to obey rules or a code of behavior using punishment to correct disobedience. So it's the practice of training people, and it is the action of training people. And you see this, and this is what I, this is what really stood out to me. Like, I thought I was going to talk about discipline, like, you know, uh, self-control and then, you know, like that kind of thing. And like the discipline and training of an athlete like that. But honey, this, this really brought me back to this whole question of disobedience <laughs> and obedience. I'd be trying so hard to be really nice and, and you have these nice uplifting words, but it just doesn't really come out that way. So first Samuel 15, 22 through 24, um, I have, I think I have just verse 24 on there. So I'm going to read 22. Samuel said, has the Lord as great a delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as in obedience to the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice, and to heed is better than the fat of rams. Verse 23 says, for rebellion is as serious as the sin. So this is verse 23. Rebellion is as serious as the sin of divination, fortune telling, and disobedience, false religion. This is from the Amplified and idolatry. Because you have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also has rejected you as king and um what i wanted to point out there he says who obedience is better than sacrifice and a lot of times what we do is we say well lord i'm gonna go to church like once a week but i'm not gonna go twice a week <laughs> right well lord i'm gonna okay i'll fast but i'm gonna i'm gonna eat meat in the morning and I'm gonna eat, you know, fruit in the afternoon or, well, Lord, like we, we trying to, God will say, do it this way. And we say, well, no, I want to do it this way. <laughs> you know, like, and so the perfect, uh, uh, the perfect example is Jonah. Jonah's like, no, nah, I want to go this direction. <laughs> I don't want to go that direction. I know I heard you. I know. And that's the thing. It's when you know, you heard God, when God said, if you can form your lips to say, God told me, God said, God showed me, showed me, right? Mm. If you can you form your lips to say that and follow up with any sentence, his expectation is that now you're going to do that thing the way he said. And, and so he said, sacrifice uh, or disobedience is like being a witch. Do you understand that? When we disobey God, we are being we are in, in we are involving ourselves in divination and idolatry and he's saying 
that is a sin. So the Bible says sin is to know to, to do good and not to do it. So if God gives you a vision, God's word is good, right? So if we hear, if we hear God's word and we don't do it, then that said, that's, that means we have, um, now we're worthy of rejection. He said, I'm going to reject you. He told, he was talking here to Samuel. He said, I'm going to reject you as king. But um, he says, I, so I'm going to reject you as my son or daughter. I'm going to reject you from eternity, <laughs> right? So we want to make sure that we are disciplined. And it says it takes discipline to stay the course. And so in the kingdom, discipline and obedience are synonymous. Oh, yes. You can't have one without the other. Um, and, and I wanted to go through this. Uh, 1 Corinthians 14, 32 says, the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophet. Ooh, I love that. Isn't that something? Because every time, you know, we'll say, oh, like, we'll oh, the devil made us do it. Or, or oh, the Holy Spirit took over and, and made me. No, you know, you, you have control over your own spirit. Your spirit is subject to you. And really, in that case, the Holy Spirit is subject to you. Because you can make a decision whether you're going to allow him to flow or whether you're going to quench him. You can, you can make a decision about That's why he say don't quench the spirit. That's why he say don't quench the spirit. So you can, God can do anything but fail unless you have no faith. He said, he said Jesus said, they said that Jesus could do no mighty miracles because of their unbelief. So if you're going to walk in unbelief, if you're going to walk in disobedience, God can't even help you because you have now stepped outside of the realm of discipline. Right. And then Proverbs 15, 10 says, um, anyone, I want to read that. Proverbs 15, 10. Let's see. You want me to pull it up? Or you got I have it. It's a school of hard knocks. This is the message. It's a school of hard knocks for those who leave God's path. If you're supposed to be running a race and enduring until the end and you leave that path, it says it is a school of hard knocks. It is a dead end street for those who hate God's rules. If you know that God has set you on a path and you are disobedient to, to, to running the race he set before you, the Bible says you hate his rules. And so what you've done now is you've, you've en enrolled yourself in the school of hard knocks. What does they say? A hard head makes off bottom. <laughs> and um, so, it says, anyone who forsakes the way, when you step off of the path, 1 Corinthians 9, 27, uh, he says, Paul says, I discipline my body. I discipline my body. I um, subject my spirit. I, obey, I, I, I make myself obey God. I keep myself on the path. I discipline my body so that my body does not fight against me. I control my flesh, right? And then he says, okay, so this, my poor, my child, I thought about my son when I did this because I used to, I used to tell him all the time, boy, a lazy man won't even raise his spoon to his mouth to satisfy his hunger. I said that scripture so many times, like the poor baby, he probably still can, can quote it, right? And so what God told me, you know, the opposite of discipline is laziness. And sometimes we're disobedient just because we're lazy. And mm. And so, I, and I want to challenge you to just do a search on um, Google, just Google lazy, laziness scriptures, lazy scriptures, and see how many pop up. There are so many, and especially in Proverbs, Proverbs 12, 24, it says the hand of the diligent, and I'm going to read through these as quickly as I can. Proverbs 12, 24. The diligent find freedom in their work. The lazy are oppressed by their work. Okay, it says the hand of the diligent will rule. Proverbs 12, 27, it says the lazy, the lazy man does not roast what he took in honey. Now he's going to go through the trouble to get all the gear, get dressed, get the permits, go out hunting, and actually gets his prey kills the he, he kills his dinner and the bible says he won't even roast what he took in honey he gonna let it rot that's laziness that's deep proverbs 13 4 it says a lazy man desires 
but has nothing. So if you have a bunch of desires and you've had desires for long time and they're not coming to pass, and it's, could it be? I'm not saying it is. Sometimes, sometimes there are other issues. But if you have desires and you have nothing, could it be that you're lazy? And I'm, I'm, I'm not looking at nobody. <laughs> Proverbs 19, 24. This is, it said, uh, it, I don't think this was the exact scripture that I quoted to my son, but this one talks about, it says that the lazy man will put his hand in the bowl and won't even feed himself. So you put your hand down there to get the food, but then you won't put the food in your own mouth. You're going to starve because you won't eat. Is that not crazy? Proverbs 21, 25. A lazy man refuses to labor, refuses. And then, um, and I want to go to Matthew 25. And this is the parable of the talents. And we've heard it over and over and over. But I, I told you um, in another series, I keep looking at this and the Holy Spirit just keeps bringing it to me. And I just can't help but see in this in this this these parables because there's one i think one in luke and one in matthew um that eternity is attached to the vision god gave us he's it's attached to the talents he gave us it's attached to what we do with god what god gave us because he said in uh, matthew 25 26 but his master answered him and said you wicked lazy servant you knew that I reaped the harvest where I did not sow and gather where I did not scatter seed. Then you ought to have put my money with the bakers and at my return, I would have received my money back with interest. So take the talent away from him and give it to the one who has the 10. And what I love, what, you, what we see there is he gave what? I think he gave one five, he gave one two, whatever. And then every, when he came back, he gave one one. And when he came back to, to, get, to get an account of what he had given them, what they had done with it, each one said, look, God, I have doubled what you gave me. And he said, what? Well done, thy good and faithful servant. And the, the other one, and the, the one who had the two, the one who had the ten, the five, he said, I, now I got ten. He said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. And then the one that had the one, he said, look, I have exactly what you gave me. <laughs> right? I buried it and I dug it up when I saw you coming. And look, I gave, here, it's in perfect condition. And he, and he said, you are wicked and lazy, wicked and lazy. And so when we talk about discipline to stay the course, Sometimes we're not staying the course because we're lazy, because we don't want to work. We come up with every excuse. There's another uh, scripture that says the lazy man won't even go, he won't go to work because he says there's a lion in the street. <laughs> I might get devoured, so I can't leave the house. You know, we had a, we had a friend of a family. Uh, he was like, he was like a surrogate grandfather because, you know, he was older than us and um, him and his wife and my parents, every time they moved to a new duty station in the military, they ended up getting transferred right behind them to the same place. It was really amazing. And they all, we all ended up living in Alaska together and, you know, and we loved him, but he used to say all the time, um, uh, he, that he couldn't, he couldn't mow the lawn because, uh, he, he goes, People have heart attacks doing that, <laughs> right? So I'm like, it was the most ridiculous thing. But the bottom line is he was lazy. And he ended up dying, not able, barely able to walk because he wouldn't exercise after he got a knee surgery. So a lot of what we're doing, our, our physical health problems, most, uh, most of what we're dealing with now as Americans, those, those health problems were pre preventable. They're coming on us because of how we're treating our body, because of the things we're doing. We're like, oh, oh, I, I'm, I'm not running no Peace Street Road Race. I'm not running no 10 miles, huh, I'm Peyton. <laughs> I'm not running, I'm not gonna run. Like, pe people have heart attacks doing that, right? People have heart attacks and they sleep too. So, so what we make a lot of excuses for all the things that we don't want to do. And sometimes that we're not want to do is just lazy. We're comfortable. I'm comfortable at home in my pajamas, watching TV, 
with my feet up, eating my popcorn. I don't want to. I don't want to put myself out. And but, but God showed me where laziness is the enemy of eternity. Right? Why are you laughing, Kim? <laughs> I, I, I was. I I was sitting there, and you know, I talked on. The Lord had me. You know, we we Gwen's doing um, talking about discipline, right? Stay in the course. Um, discipline helps you stay the course. Um, but discipline also helps you live out the vision. Yeah, come on. Yes. It, it really does. Um, because in, in, in living out the vision, we can't be lazy. In living out the vision, we do need to be disciplined. And living out, and, and, and when we say discipline, we mean just discipline to the pet fact that we see God. Yeah. That we pray, that we fast. That, that we stay before him. She said something that really hit me. Um, it's one thing when you know that mm -hmm. God has given the vision. Come on, it is. You know, it's one thing when you know that you know that you know that you know that God has given the vision. And, and, and the thing about God, he says, no good thing what I would hold from you. Mm -hmm. So if you gave me a vision, even though... I don't want to be disciplined for it right now. Even though I'm struggling and I'm being lazy, if I can believe and grab hold to the fact that you gave it to me mm -hmm. and your words say you hold no good thing from me, it has to be something in it for my good at the end. Yes. So if I can make it through the in-betweens, not be so lazy, not be, you know, be disciplined, hear God, pray, it's going to work out for your good. That's what we're trying to say. You yeah. know, going back to the Jeremiah 20 and 11, all of these things that we're saying, if we trust God with the vision, Come on. if we trust him and stay the course, you know, we don't, we don't want to end up like when is saying with the different, you know, things and the different proverbs and, and the different rebellion and the disobedience. Mm -hmm. No, we want to obey God through the in-between. Yeah. Right. Come on. In that, that yeah. that's it. You want to and, you know, and, and so Stay we, the course. But we can Stay choose. The, we can choose to live a life of discipline. We can choose to subject ourselves to discipline. To 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 discipline ourselves on our own. To 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 keep ourselves on course. To be obedient to God, or we choose in our disobedience to be disciplined for disobeying God. Like, so you can choose the positive discipline or you yeah, can- you don't wanna get swallowed by the fish. You don't wanna get swallowed by the fish. Like you wanna just go to Nineveh and preach. You don't want the fish to be, to have to take you to Nineveh. <laughs> right? But, but I, I do wanna say this though. What I love about Jonah, Jonah, how, how the situation with Jonah, what I loved about it, is that God didn't give up on Jonah. Come on, yeah. He didn't, even though he know, okay, this is my child who's struggling with the vision. This is my child who don't want to do the vision. This, you know how you have kids and you say, okay, this is my child that talk back. Come on, yeah. we all, you know, I have three. And there's certain ones that just, you, boy, do you, must you have something to say every time? <laughs> Can't you just be quiet and listen? Yeah. So so God, God didn't give up on him. Yeah. You understand yeah. me? God didn't give up on him. God loves us. Um, we can we can win, saints. That's yeah. what I'm trying to say. We're all gold medalists. We we all gold medalists. We can win this race. Yeah. Because why? God has a plan for us. So so seek seek him, you know, ask for help doing the in-between. Yeah. You know, and, and and let God show you that I've I've called you. Yes. You know, you can do this. We can yeah. we be encouraged because God loves us yes. he has a plan for our lives you know he he his his will is for us to to walk in the vision and the victory that he has for us so be encouraged today that we can be disciplined we can walk it out because why we have a god that we can trust and we can have faith in and he will give us the instruction so does anybody have anything to say i know it's, it's getting late but we definitely want to give you an opportunity to say anything before um, we go, but Gwen, that was that that blessed me. It really did. We gotta stay the course, and to stay in the course, we can't just do the course any old kind of way either. Come right, any way we want to. That's yeah. it. 
we, that's why we have to stay before God. That's why we have to seek him for strategic instruction so that we can make it. Yes. We can make it. Yes. So does anybody have anything they want to say before we let you great people go and thank you again for, you know, being with us? Yes, Miss Peyton. I have a prayer request. Um, okay. There's a friend that works in my building and she has two grandchildren. One is a biological girl, the other is a biological boy. The boy mm -hmm. has decided that he wants to be a girl. And um, she was sharing with one of her coworkers that's a newer person in their office how I treat both of her grandchildren because I've met them, how I love them and, you know, just who they are. But at the same time, I truly want to be able to share with this one. And he's only like, I think, 12 or 13, somewhere in there. But I want to, I, I know, and I'm grateful that she sees the love of God in me but I have to tell the truth. And when that time comes, I just want to be able to walk in the wisdom of God's word to be able to love, you know, lovingly share um, with this young man or, you know, so I'm just asking for you all to, to pray for me that God will give me the wisdom at the appropriate time and how to share it in love. Got you. Right, because yes. you said the key word, love. Yes. That, 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 that's the key word right there is, you know, let, let me say this, and I might take some heat for it, but I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. Yeah. We as people, as Christians, we love to emphasize on homosexuality. Yes. We do. But just like we, we, pay, we pray for wisdom to talk to someone who's struggling in homosexuality, we need to be praying for the liar. We need to be praying for the adulterer. Come on. We need to be praying because it is all sin in God's eyesight. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So, so yes, we, 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 we pray for them in love, but make sure that we're not sitting in a, a seat of judgment. Like, oh, their sin is just the greatest sin in the world right. because it's not, it's, it's society or the, the, the church looks at it differently. But if we want to keep it real, the Bible says sin is sin. So now, how am I handling the liar? How am I handling the adulterer? How, you know, how am I making, you know, I, I never ever want to make a, people feel that, oh, their sin is just so great that now it desires all of this attention. Right. You, you understand what I'm trying to say? Now yeah. hear me out. Yeah. Yes, because why? We, 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 we're good at, praying over and against certain visible sins put it right. that way right, right right we're good at that we but we could know that this person tell little white lies every now and then but we ain't laying on our face before god how to speak to them right. come on so 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 i and, and it's not anything with you Peyton. H hear me out you know because w what i'm trying to say is no matter what the sin is that's what i'm trying to say mm -hmm. we gotta be able to go to God with the same seriousness that we would go to him in a situation like that. Yep. Yes. If my, if my, if somebody, my girlfriend or somebody came to me and said, Kim, I, I'm cheating on my husband. I need you to pray for me. I can't now make them feel like they're the worst person in the world mm -hmm. or they're just an outcast to society. No, because the Bible says he without um, sin, you know, cast the first stone. Right. Right. right so, right. so, so we gotta make sure that, we, we, we definitely, like you said, we will pray for you because we got to make sure that we're laying before God for strategic instruction when we're dealing with people. Yeah. When we're dealing with, and especially to me, um, when it comes to homosexuality, and I'm not saying, oh, give them a pass. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is sometimes saints as Christians, we're so much harder on certain people and their sins than we are others. Yep. Right? And, and that's not God. It, it really isn't. Why do you think he did that for the adulterer with writing in the, in the, in the um, dirt? Why do you think he didn't have a problem talking to the woman at the well, right? Because God knew that certain people would look at their sins and shun them. And that's not his heart. Mm -hmm. His heart is that we all be saved, yeah. right? Yep. And like I said, what we need to focus on and remember, uh, there is no big sin, little sin. I don't remember Jesus saying that. I, I just don't. I don't remember him saying that. Yeah. So 
yes, let's 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 pray about it, Peyton, and and ask God to give you strategic instruction. Yes, you know, strategic instruction because you you don't as Christians. You may be one day the person that that child comes to for, as a refuge. Thank you. Yes. And you want that child to always know, I can come to Miss Peyton. And it doesn't mean that Miss Peyton don't speak truth. But there's something about your truth that makes me feel you love me. There's something about your truth that makes me feel that God loves me. Yep. Right? So that's how we got to we gotta learn how when we, when we talk to people, we... We, we pray about people and their, their sins and their situations that we got to remember God's, God loves, he still loves, he loves people. He loves us. He loves everybody. So yes, we will pray for you in reference to that, Peyton. And, and I said to you a couple of weeks ago, God put you in position for things like this. Oh, come on. Yes, he did. I believe that, Peyton. Because he knows you have a heart for people and you, yeah. you don't have a heart to harm. You have a heart to, to love and to help. Yep. So he will, he will give you strategy. I believe that. But I just wanted to share that, you know. Yes, Ms. Shea. Can I just uh -huh. say two, two quick things and then I got a skedaddle. Um, okay. Number one, thank you and Sister Gwen for making the word so practical. Mm -hmm. um, because I, I believe that that's how you are able to live out the word. Yes. When, yes. when it's, it's practical enough that you can eat it right where you live. Mm -hmm. um, the piece about the fact that Jesus in, in his own flesh struggled with that and had to ask for strength for yeah. the vision. Um, I think it's so helpful because oftentimes there are pressures in society that make you feel you're not in the right timing. You're this age. You didn't get there yet. Um, you know, you, you should just give up and then you get weary yeah. and it's easier to be tempted to give up than to say, God, give me strength to get to where you have for me to be. Yeah. Um, the second thing I just want to say in terms of um, praying for people, um, I always like to ask God for wisdom or to give me insight to the, to the root, right. right? Because oftentimes what we see is only sym symptomatic. It, it's right. an action Thank you. that is in response to a, a pain at the root. Right. And so when, when we begin to ask God for wisdom about what, what is the root of the thing, Right. That's how we can really catch people and minister to them because it, it says to them, God heard my heart. Yes. Ooh, uh, yes. And he used someone like Peyton yes. to help yeah. you. See, yeah. see, we got to always look at it that yes. I'm, I'm here to help you. Yes. Not to, not to chastise you in a harmful way. No, no, no. I'm, I'm here. You know, I, I tell people all the time, God wasn't someone who just exposed people. No. He really wasn't. He loved people. He, 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 took, he handled their situation and their need, right, and their sin or whatever in a loving way. Yeah. He really did. He really yeah. did. He told the woman, don't go tell nobody. She ran and told her back because she was happy. You understand? Yeah. So who's going to pray us out? Shay? Any volunteers? <laughs> Mine's going to be real quick because I'm about to be late. Okay, go, 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 go. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Father God, I just thank you. I bless you. I glorify you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this time of word um, that you fed us and that, God, you've given us seed that causes us to grow. Father God, bless your two women of God who you spoke through them, God. Uh, anoint them, pour back into them everything they poured out. But God, don't let us just be hearers of this word and not doers yeah, also. Yeah. Father God, call, help us not to operate in witchcraft by hearing your word and hearing the instruction that you're trying to give us and not doing anything with it. Mm -hmm. Bless our word, bless the word we've received, bless our understanding, oh God. Your word says that the entrance of your word gives light. So yeah. continue to illuminate our understanding of the word that you've given and help us to live it out daily. Thank you, Lord, for being so committed to us. We love you with all of our heart, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. We lift up Peyton before you, Father God. We ask that you give yes. her wisdom, just really that a word of wisdom, that she would speak by your spirit, a yes, word God. of season that would speak to the heart yes. of this young person. Yes, we just God. thank you, Father, that right now we cancel the assignment of the enemy. Oh, he, my God. We cancel the assignment of the enemy, Father. He is trying to obstruct your purpose, yeah. obstruct his path, so that 
that they can't see the vision that you have, that they won't get to the good end that you have for them. And we know, Father, in you, there is no male or female, that there is only spirit. But we, but in this earth, we walk in a male suit or a female suit. And we just want, we thank you, Father, that this child will not have to suffer the misery of just even carrying that for life and just going through the torment of it over and over. We cancel every, every, every every tormenting spirit right now in the name of Jesus. We refuse to let them go right now. We plead the blood of Jesus. You died for this child, Father. Father, and we just thank you that your purpose shall come to pass in this life and that you're going to work through, you're going to flow through Peyton as a vessel that she will pray instantly and season, Father, that she will show this person love that they won't even know what it is about her. They're just something that's going to draw them to her and she is going to be there in season, Father, to minister your word, to be a laborer in your harvest and we thank you for it in the name of Jesus. Jesus as you was praying, mm-hmm. all I heard the Holy Spirit say, Peyton, let them know Jesus love them. Love them. That's See, it. sometimes, some people, it's just that they don't even feel loved by anybody. Yeah. That's it. Just let them know Jesus love them, Peyton. Yeah. All right, guys. We love you. God bless you. Thank Pray you for us. us. Pray for us. Bye, everybody. Thanks. Love Thanks. you. Thanks for joining us, Pam. Love and you guys. Good night. Thank you. Love you guys. <laughs> All right, Miss Helen.